Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to Interstitial Lung Disease Info. In this video, I'd like to maybe tackle a little bit uh, the topic of dubious health claims that are affecting the field of interstitial lung diseases and pulmonary fibrosis, mm -hmm. i.e. my field. So, you know, when I read comments as a physician who's working in this field, some of the comments are really good. They're really good questions. Some of the people who are on my channel or on social media, they actually put some really, really good tips for patients who need to manage these conditions and they're suffering with these terrible conditions. But then there's also, from for different reasons, you find comments that are a little bit worrying. And I just want to raise that concern. So just to, to put it out there, that sometimes when you read something that, uh, that goes along the lines of treatment X, whatever that may be, is the best treatment for pulmonary fibrosis. So if you're reading that, and there was a comment recently that I got on my channel, which was that a specific treatment X, let's say, was the best treatment for removing pulmonary fibrosis, but also fibrosis from the lungs, breast, and uterus. So when I see these claims as a doctor, I my alarm bells, my red flags just come on because these are comments that are either made for, for good reason by people who maybe have tried something and they've had a good result. But I think in many cases, it's people trying to sell you something. So just be mindful. It could be for good reasons sometimes, because people maybe are, don't understand the topic very well and they're just trying to help with whatever information they've come across. Or maybe um, they just don't see the nuances and how different people respond to different treatments in different ways. But also on the flip side, it could be people who are just interested in either trolling or just like giving false hope or selling something for profit and using someone suffering to make money, which I think is really dubious and questionable. And we should try to fight that. So I'm not saying that there aren't treatments that haven't yet been proven and we will find some cure and maybe we're actually onto something that we haven't really worked out how to use clinically yet. But also, there are a lot of treatments out there, a lot of claims, especially in the field of rare conditions where there aren't very good treatments available, where people will try to hang on by, uh, for dear life to, to all kinds of hope. So it's really important to try to go with what's proven. Because you don't want to be, you know, foregoing a good treatment that you may have available right now just for the sake of trying something that miraculously may work. We may find new things. There, There is a lot of science that probably there's a lot of research that hasn't been done on experimental compounds and all kinds of things like that. But I can tell you as an ILD physician, as a pulmonary fibrosis physician, I would really like to have a compound that would reverse or remove pulmonary fibrosis or lung scarring. But I can't say that we have that yet. And this is just working in the field and actually trying to, to help people and reading about this stuff. And we haven't really got the evidence to support any of these um, miraculous claims that I've seen kind of floated online. So obviously, there are treatments out there in clinical trials that hold the promise to actually reverse scarring one day. I think that is something that's coming, but we're not there yet. So all I can say is that there is hope in clinical research, but it has to be done in the right way. And just be mindful when you're just, you know, reading all these claims that a specific treatment will cure your pulmonary fibrosis. Just be mindful that it may be, I don't know, it may be not as helpful as you think. So I know the condition is difficult. I know there are a lot of issues to consider. I know you are afraid that you don't want it to progress. You want to be on the best treatments. Maybe you don't have access to the right specialists, but just buying some unproven product is probably not the best way forward. Obviously, you have your own body, your own mind. You can do your own research and make your own health choices at the end of the day. All I'm saying is that just be mindful. If, if something looks too good to be true, just try to use your common sense and maybe consider that it's not as good as claimed. Especially, and this was something that I've heard um, in a talk recently. I attended this talk about medical misinformation and things like that so there are uh data voids <laughs> so there are there there are these things and i i think that was the word data void i'm not sure if it was an other word actually but uh, that was used but basically there are these uh, products that have appeared online and all the information that you can see on the those products is basically positives because 
no one is out there to criticize them. All the information has been <laughs> perfectly trimmed, tailored to suit the search engine. So when you look for that specific product, you only come across benefits and you don't find the negatives because of ads, because of marketing, because a lot of health claims, because all that is written is written in a positive light. So that is a void. There is a data void. <laughs> we don't see the negative. There's a void of all the negative parts of that particular particular product. And this happens a lot with a lot of dubious health products that are out there. And I'm sure you can find a lot of them online. You probably have heard of all kinds of things. You can think of your own examples. But I just wanted to, to raise this point in this video that there are some dubious claims starting to appear in the field of pulmonary fibrosis. And I just want you to be mindful uh, regarding your own health. Make your own health choices by all means, but try and have a discussion with someone who knows what they're talking about. Maybe have a discussion with your pulmonologist, with your family doctor, with someone who can help you put everything in the right context because it's important to maybe have a second opinion sometimes especially when you're trying some kind of a risky therapy. That's all for me in this video. Hope it was helpful. And as, as always, please leave a comment in the, section, in the comment section below and I'll try my best to, to create more content to fill the data voids related to ILD and pulmonary fibrosis. All the best and good health.